In what has been a prolonged feud with several tantrums and disses, both parties have agreed to take the fight to the octagon. However, what is expected when a trained fighter is up against a 50-plus, never-fought-year-old man? Well, to the odds makers, it's just a matter of clear favorites. Jake Paul has opened as a monstrous odds-on favorite for a fight with UFC president Dana White. Stay tuned for more. Firstly, fighting for egos? Here's a little history on the feud. As early as last year, Jake Paul had been dreaming of knocking out White. In one of his interviews, the former YouTube star claimed that his feud with the UFC boss would end with him putting Uncle Dana to sleep. Talks of a Jake Paul Dana White boxing match began when White said on record that he would bet $1 million on Ben Askren to beat Jake Paul. Paul responded on social media by challenging White to double the bet and proposing a 2021 boxing bout between them. Of course, Paul went on to put Askren to sleep. The two have had several petty social media squabbles since then, but the rivalry got heated when Jake Paul claimed that White uses cocaine and the latter claimed that Paul uses steroids. Paul then dug deeper when he blasted the UFC's fighter pay and benefits and just this week bought shares of stocks in the UFC's parent company, Endeavor Group Holdings. Whether the accumulation of these events and the diss track gets White to lace up the gloves remains to be seen, though. Next, Jake Paul is given a 92.3% chance to beat Dana White in a boxing match. Could Jake Paul and UFC President Dana White step into the ring for a once-in-a-lifetime fight? Oddsmakers are prepared for the possibility and they believe it wouldn't be much of a fight. Jake Paul is given negative 1,200 odds, or an implied 92.3% chance of beating Dana White in a boxing match. Meanwhile, White is given plus 600 odds, or an implied 14.3 chance to pull off the upset. Those are pretty good odds considering he's 52 years old and has never fought professionally. They're better odds than Logan Paul had against Floyd Mayweather. Jake Paul has a thing for fighting people he knows he can beat. He's yet to fight a trained boxer, and he's never fought someone under the age of 35. At least White is a trained boxer and was a boxing instructor, but he's 52 years old and he's never had a professional fight. Maybe one day Paul will fight a boxer, as he was scheduled to do before Tommy Fury's injury. But for now, oddsmakers don't believe that'll be the case. Even if he doesn't fight White, he also has odds on fighting former wide receiver Antonio Brown. Another older, he'll be 34 in July, former athlete who isn't a trained boxer is just like in his fight against White. Paul would be a massive favorite at negative negative 300 or an implied 75% chance of victory. In fact, Paul has never been the underdog heading into a fight. That was expected to change when he fought Fury, but that never happened. But they are always ready to take their feud higher. Jake Paul making a diss track? I never saw that coming. Jake Paul recently took his war against Dana White a notch higher by releasing a diss track. The track failed to impress upcoming UFC star Patty Pimblett. According to the baddie, Paul's diss track lacks humor to the point of being embarrassing. Recently, Pimblett Pimblett said on YouTube, in his last outing, Paul scored a sixth-round KO win over former UFC welterweight king Tyrone Woodley. As Woodley was knocked out cold on his feet, several fans and pundits opined that the match was rigged. Patty Pimblett discussed speculation that Paul's KO over T-Wood had been staged. However, he didn't buy into the problem child's narrative of hustling for fighter pay. Pimblett believes it is just the latest gimmick by Paul to gain some clout. According to Jake Paul, the diss track is an initial attempt in his war to expose exploitative practices practices in the UFC, the 25-year-old said in an interview. Jake Paul's diss track majorly revolves around getting adequate fighter pay and health benefits for UFC fighters. The video begins with former UFC fighter Chris Cyborg signing a three-fight deal under pressure from a balding executive. As Cyborg leaves the room, the executive celebrates with his associates after successfully locking up the deal. This wouldn't be the first time a fight was arranged with Dana White. What is the possibility we would actually get a fight this time? Find out. At Throwback 2014, White was boxing regularly, or so he claimed during one media roundtable. Back in 2007, White even got himself a Nevada state boxing license, going through the process so that he could fight former UFC star Tito Ortiz, whom he feuded with during that time. Their feud was long gone, but it got physical one time when they were on a private jet. According to the story, Ortiz playfully locked White in a neck crank, but when the UFC boss tapped, Ortiz didn't let go, forcing White to throw punches at his rib cage. When Ortiz Ortiz let go, it allegedly became a full-blown fistfight that was eventually stopped by the Farida brothers. White later claimed that he would beat Ortiz in a boxing match, and the bout was set. However, Ortiz never showed up at the weigh-ins, and the bout never happened. It's highly unlikely, though, that White will fight now at the age of 52, and against an opponent who has fought professionally before, even if none of his opponents was really pro boxers. Despite what his critics say, Jake Paul trains like a pro boxer and fights like one. Uncle Dana doesn't need to prove that by getting inside 
inside the ring, there could just be a chance of the fight not happening. Now, in other MMA news, Israel Adesanya will be staying with the UFC for the foreseeable future. It was well known that Adesanya would fight out of his UFC contract this year, but on Wednesday, it was revealed that the middleweight champion had re-signed with the promotion. His management company, Paradigm, announced the news via a press release. The middleweight champ has signed a new multi-fight deal with the promotion that will make him one of the highest paid athletes in the history of mixed martial arts. This is no doubt good news for everyone involved, as since joining the UFC, Adesanya has become a fan favorite and a massive star. At least several more fights inside the octagon will be in his future. Coming next, Adesanya vs. Whitaker, the fight we've all been waiting for. Fight week for UFC 271 has arrived, and arguably the most significant rematch in middleweight history lurks in the shadows. At UFC Fight 271, Robert Whitaker will seek redemption when he faces the only man to defeat him in five years and who broke his undefeated middleweight record, Israel Adesanya. Adesanya defeated Whitaker in Melbourne, Australia in October 2019 to begin his reign as a division champion. Adesanya has been absolutely magnificent at middleweight, with only a brief detour to the light heavyweight title picture causing a blemish on his otherwise perfect MMA record. The last style blender comes into this title defense with a 10-0 middleweight record, having defeated elite 185-pounders such as Marvin Vittori twice, Paulo Costa, Yoel Romero, Kelvin Gastelum, Derek Brunson, and Anderson Silva. Then there's the man who rolled over to win the UFC middleweight title. Whitaker appeared to be on track to establish himself as the UFC's second greatest middleweight champion, trailing only the legendary Spider Silva. That spark was short-lived after being outclassed and knocked out in front of Whitaker's Australian fans by Adesanya. On his way to redemption, the former champion defended his number one contender status with victories over Gastelum, Jared Canigny, and Darren Till. The main event of UFC 271 provides something of value to each fighter. For Adesanya, it's a chance to solidify his status as the greatest middleweight fighter of his generation. This is a chance for Whitaker to reclaim his soul from the man who stole it. Another story, Kamaru Usman undergoes hand surgery, expects to return on July 2nd. UFC welterweight champion Kamaru Usman underwent surgery on a hand ligament but is expected to recover in time for international fight week. Usman's manager, Ali Abdelaziz, broke the news. Despite the operation, Usman is still targeting a return to the octagon for UFC 276 on July 2nd. Usman is widely expected to face top contender Leon Edwards next, but nothing has been formally announced by the promotion. He's coming off of an eventful 2021 in which he earned knockout wins over Gilbert Burns and George Masvidal, while also winning the rubber match with Colby Covington. In an Instagram post, UFC president Dana White also shared a graphic photo of Usman's operated hand. Pound for pound, the best fighter in the world had hand ligament surgery today, White captioned in IG. This is the before and after. See you soon, champ. White has recently confirmed that Usman will face Edwards next, despite the exact booking still under negotiation. It appears that UFC 276 could be the targeted date for the high-stakes welterweight rematch. Usman recently said during a podcast appearance that he suffered a broken hand just weeks before his rematch with Covington at UFC 268. He would go on to win the fight via unanimous decision. Usman claimed that he injured his hand during a sparring session with ferocious lightweight contender Justin Gathji. Usman has won 19 fights in a row and is undefeated in his UFC career. He's widely regarded as one of the greatest champions in the promotion's history. That'll be all for today. Thanks for watching.